Hallelujah. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of our people. How many believe that the presence of God is here? The Bible says that the Lord says that where two or three are gathered together in his name, here he is in our midst. There's just something wonderful and beautiful about the presence of the Lord. Isn't it wonderful? And here today, listen, you might be sitting here going, well, Pastor Michael, I'm just going into a building. We're just being around people. But the Holy Spirit is here right now. And he wants to minister to you right now. No matter what you're feeling, no matter what you're facing, our God is bigger, our God is greater. And there's just something wonderful. As we worship God, as we focus on the Lord, as we praise his holy name, God inhabits the praises of his people. And whatever your need is this morning, I want you just to roll your burden to the Lord and have a spirit of expectancy throughout the whole service, right? God can touch you, God can heal your body, he can adjust that bone in your body. He can re uh, the, the organs that need to be touched. God can do it. He is faithful. I believe in a God who is a God of restoration, complete, entire restoration. Amen. I believe in a holistic gospel, spirit, soul, and body. I believe God can take your yesterdays, do like this, throw it so far from you, and that the Word of God says that we become what the Word says, brand new, new creations in Christ. And even if you were a Christian and you kind of got scuffed up along the way, I believe today God wants to minister to you. How many are believing for a freshness today? A freshness today. Yesterday's gone. So as we're singing this song, here's what I want you to do. Sing it to the Lord. Sing it with your heart. Just love on Jesus. You guys ready? All right. Without a 
trace There's nothing left now There's only grace There's only grace There's only grace There's only love There's only mercy And believe me, it's enough your sins are gone without a trace. There's nothing left now. There's only grace. And if I fall down, if you fall again, get back up, get back up, reach out and take my hand. Get back up, get back up, get back up again. Get back up again. It's only grace. Come on, church. It's only grace. It's only love. It's only mercy. And believe me, it's enough. Without a trace, there's nothing left now. There's only grace. And if you fall again, get back up, get back up, reach out and take my hand. Get back up, get back up, get back up. We're just gonna just one second. Just we're here just in the presence of the Lord. Isn't it beautiful? Now there, I, I know that who, who's got something physically going on in their body right now? Just maybe there's something you're dealing with something now, and you want prayer for it right there. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Right over there, dear sister. I want you guys to see the hands, guys. One over here. One over here. Over here. Over here. All right. You guys pray. You guys over there is over there. Let's get some people to pray. Put your hands on these precious people over there. Andy and uh, Brian help out a little bit. Uh, Dana, you can over here help our dear brother here, my friend. Uh, pray for my dear friend uh, Patrick. He, he needs help. And, and Bridget needs some help over here. There's a dear sister back there. Mom, help help out over here. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right. And we got some uh, uh, Sarah back here. Brian, uh, Brian, maybe we can split you guys. Maybe you can go help my dear niece over here. Uh, Debbie, help out over there. Uh, Sarah, raise your hand again, Sarah. Raise your hand. Raise your hand again. I, I believe in the healing power, the presence of God, the anointing of God, right? The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How are you guys hearing it today? There's healing power in your hands. Ready? Get back up. Get back up. Get back up again. There's only grace, there's only love. Just just receive it, just receive it. Only mercy. Just let the Lord just minister to you. I believe the healing power of Christ is flowing in your veins right now. Flowing in your body. Gone without a trace. There's nothing left now. There's only his only grace, His only love, there's only mercy, I believe me, it's enough. Without a trace, there's nothing left now, and if you fall down, I believe right now, freedom in this place. Reach out. Freedom in this place in Jesus' name. Get back up. Get back up. Get back up. Get back up again. Get back up again. Get back up. Listen, you might have fallen down, but listen, just get back up. 
Because there's only grace, right? There's only grace. There's only love. There's only mercy. And believe me, it's enough. Your sins are gone without a trace. There's nothing left now. There's only grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are glad you're free? How many are thankful for the presence of the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys are awesome. We appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Aren't you the sweet presence of the Lord in this place? Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't it great? We come together. He comes with us. <laughs> we bring him with us. He's there. He's just awesome. Are you guys ready for some word today? I won't keep you too long, but just long enough, right? You want to get it, right? Yeah. How many thank God that God sends his word and brings deliverance, brings Amen. freedom, brings Amen. healing, brings faith? Wherever you are right now, God wants to speak to you in a very deep way. His word is so powerful that it divides divides asunder the, the soul and the spirit and, the, and the, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. This word is so sharp. It's going to penetrate deep inside of us. If we allow it to, God's word is going to go deep inside. Uh, he's going to perform some surgeries deep within us, things that we can't see, things that we can see. How many are just open for the Lord just to go deep, 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 deep? Yeah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Lord, Lord. <laughs> this is my day. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Feed me, Lord. Yeah. Teach me, Lord. I'm so ready. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put that first. Oh, wow. Everybody hold your peace. Woo, look at this guy. He's got some prop things going against him, isn't it? How many of you felt like that? You're sitting there. Life's going good. And all of a sudden, it just seems like there's a hurricane wind that comes your way. You ever been that way before? And it just seems like there's all this trouble going on the outside. But how many are glad, as we're going to see from the word of the Lord, that even though all this is going on around us, we can be like this guy sitting on that park bench, feeding the birds, trusting God. Amen. Going through the fire, going through the flood. Isn't that awesome today? How many are ready to hold your peace? Look what it says over in John, the 14th chapter, verse number one. John, the 14th chapter. And I'm just so appreciative of the words that Jesus spoke. Every word that he speaks is so powerful. Every word that he speaks is so life changing. And if we just meditated on this one scripture here for the rest of our lives, we'd be so much better for it. Amen. God's word is like pregnated with revelation. As you study the word, it just comes alive and alive and alive and alive. But notice what Jesus was saying to the disciples. And it's really cool because he was starting to convey to them that he was about ready to leave. They were getting a sensing that he was ready to go. And he pretty much told them flat out, guys, I ain't going to be with you forever here now. Uh, I'm going to be passing the baton to you. And they were sitting there watching this wonderful, awesome teacher, this wonderful, awesome man that was totally in control of every circumstance. Wherever was going on, Jesus was the master of it. He had the words, wisdom poured out of him, words like honey, words of just so sweet, so powerful, so beautiful. And they're, they're looking at each other and going, my goodness, he's ready to go. And he's telling us that he's going to be crucified. But they couldn't hear the rest of it because Jesus was telling them that they're going to, three days, this is going to happen, but I'm going to rise up. Yes. But their mind, just like a lot of us, we get focused on, uh, I didn't get past the first part. How many of you, you're hearing a story and it's like, and you, don't, you don't go to the rest of it. How many know we got to hear and go to the rest of the story? Yep. Amen. How many believe that even Joe, that there's some hard times, there's something glorious on the other side. Amen. And even though Jesus was speaking about the cross, the, the, the sufferings that he was going to go through, that he was telling them there's resurrection power that's going to be available to you. There's going to be something glorious on the other side. And so he's looking at them and he tells them something so beautiful, so profound. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question there. Who is responsible for doing this? <laughs> right. So that's telling us that God, through his word, right? He's telling us that we have the ability by his goodness, by his word, by his Holy Spirit, that we don't have to let our heart be troubled. We don't have to let our heart or we can let our heart be troubled. Notice the word for troubled. I want you to see it here. Here's the Greek word, guys. Slide number two. The, and it's a big one here. But, <laughs> but anyways, take from this whatever you can get. You know, sometimes when I over, 
I, I, I don't want to say overkill, over life, the, the, the definition. I just throw a lot out there. And, you know, because something will speak to somebody in a different way. So when it talks about troubled, here's the Greek word. It means, first and foremost, to cause inward commotion. Has anybody ever had inward commotion? He also means this. It means to take away the calmness by agitating a thing by movements, parts, to and fro. So it's kind of basically explaining commotion here. It's talking agitation. Things are moving. You're getting stirred up. It means to, I said it myself, it means to stir up. Has anybody besides myself ever been stirred up? Yes. Right? It means to be perplexed of the mind, right? By suggesting scruples or doubts or, you know, you're starting to wonder and question. To strike, to strike one's spirit with fear, dread, anxiousness, or distress. How many are glad by the grace of God we can keep this from our hearts? Yes. Yes. That God is, good to see you, Jonah. <laughs> We've seen him a bit. Is it God? He just got out of work, this kid. He was on call this morning. So, Jonah, we honor you. Thank you for doing this. I know I'm embarrassing the tar of you, but, but, but how many are thankful that by the grace of God, we don't have to live that way? How many are glad we don't have to live that way? Everybody say, thank God for the word. Now look at that in the Amplified. Look at that scripture in the Amplified. Let it become a, alive in you. He says, let not your heart. He says, do not. Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. You believe in and hear to and trust in and rely on God. Believe in and hear to and trust and rely on me. He's saying basically our faith is trusting God is going to help us in regards to that. Amen. Look what it says. Uh, slide number four. Here's a couple different translations. Actually, yeah. Slide four. He said, do not be worried and upset. Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also me. Is, can we do this? Yes. If Jesus says we can do it, how many believe we can do it, right? Yes. How many are going to, by the grace of God, not let your heart be troubled? Yes. Yes. But look at here. Jesus, later on in this same chapter, uh, uh, verse number 27, he says something very similar, but he's talking about peace here. Look what he says here in John 14, 27. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace. Now, if you weren't here or been coming on Wednesday night, we've been talking about living in peace, Amen. steps of peace. And if you can't come, by all means, listen to it online. You know, yeah. keep aware of what we're sharing and teaching here at the church. But we're talking about peace. But Jesus said, peace, I leave with you. Notice the kind of peace. He said, my peace, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. How many are glad that God's peace is different than the world's peace. Yeah. That the very same peace that Jesus operated in, lived in, he's saying to them, that peace is in you. I'm giving you that peace. Amen. Everybody just say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. That, that's God's peace. You might not understand everything. You might not be able to figure it out. But how many know you can have peace in the midst of your storm? You can have that peace that passes all understanding or what you're thinking. How many are glad God's peace is a powerful force in our life? He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Again, he says it again. Let not your heart be what? Troubled, Troubled or what? Or afraid. Everybody say troubled, troubled. or afraid. That's the same word that I just gave you there. But notice the second word, afraid, slide number six. He says, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be stirred up. And don't let it be afraid. The word afraid means to be afraid. It means to be cowardly. It means to be timid. Everybody say, by the grace of God, grace of God. I am not going to be a coward. <laughs> I'm not going to be timid. How many believe that you and I have to face life's challenges, not afraid, not cowardly, but bold toward a God. Yes. Bold as a lion. Yes. Strong. Yes. Winners. Yes. Conquerors. Yes. Not timid, not wondering, not shaking. We got the victory. Yes. You are more than a conqueror. Yes. You're not trying to get the victory. You got the victory. Yes. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Yes. You need to just put your chin up and go, I win. You're, and people might look at you and say, boy, it doesn't look like you're a winner. But how many know you are a winner? 
And all the devils in hell, they, they thought Jesus was a loser when they crucified him and put him in the grave. But they didn't know the plan of God because if they did, they never would have crucified him. Are you guys hearing me? Look at that scripture. I want you to see it again. I want you to see that scripture. He said, don't let your heart, don't let your heart. He says, peace I leave with you. Notice the word for peace. Slide number five. How many are glad this peace is in us right now? Look at that. Calm. Everybody say calm. calm. Harmony, right? This, the, the words we use, actually the word talks about holistic. Again, God, prosperity, your soul's prospering, your body's prospering, you're prospering. But also it means peace. This is an interesting part. Exemption from the wage and the havoc of war. There might be a whole bunch of bombs going around us, but I'm glad you can be in the midst of the fiery furnace and not even stink like smoke. Amen. <laughs> That's the God that we serve. We got this whole shield of faith, all the grace and favor on us. Even though you're not, you're going through the hard times. The hard times don't got to get in you, touch you, and you go on through victory. Amen. Some people say, well, are you saying that we're never going to have any problems? No, you're going to have plenty of them. <laughs> but you're going to win all the time. <laughs> are you guys hearing me? Oh, you're preaching a simplistic gospel. No, that's what Jesus preached, right? Preached, we win all the time. All the time. He said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, right? And nothing by any means shall harm you or hurt you. How many are glad you got the authority? Yes. All right. But notice there, he says, don't, let the, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Look at it says in John 16, 33. Don't be, don't be troubled. This is a familiar scripture, guys. You guys have heard this one quite a bit, but I want you to see it again. Jesus again, he says, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have. Oh, who likes that? Who's got any white out? We need to white that out. Does anyone want that? <laughs> no, we're not whiting it out. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me, can you have peace? Yes. In the world, where do we live? Yep. You, shall, you shall have what? Tribulation. You shall shall have is is that negotiable no <laughs> you shall have tribulation but everybody say but, but. everybody say but. but be what be cheer. how many good cheer people in the house <laughs> why should you be of good cheer I, I have overcome the world and his victory is our victory yes. Yes. are you guys hearing this yes. everybody say good cheer, good cheer. But you're seeing here, there's peace, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing tribulation, so we're seeing a combination. Jimmy, put that first slide back up again, I wanted to see it. We're seeing this whole thing here, you got, you got a, a storms coming, you're going through hard times, there's challenges there, but how many glad you can have your peace? Amen. Yes. Now is there a key, is there some keys that will help you and I hold your peace? Yes. When struggles are coming, when you're getting harassed, is there something in the Bible that we can go, hmm, how do I hold my peace? How do I keep my peace in the midst of the struggle? How do I keep my peace in the midst of the storm? I'm glad you're thinking that. I'm glad you're asking that. Because I'm going to give you a principle today that you can take home with you so that you can apply it to your life. How to hold your peace. How to hold your, your calm. Your don't get all stirred up. How to do it. Let's just le learn from the master. Look at Mark, the uh, 14th chapter, verse 52. How many love the word? Amen. Everybody say, I'm a peaceful person. I'm a peaceful person. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now look, we're going to learn right from Jesus. Mark, the 14th chapter, verse 55. And, and so it says, And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness, right, against Jesus, to put him to death and found none. So this is right when Jesus is before the priests, right? We're going, they're, they're, they're trying to get a case against him. And so they're seeking for witnesses so they can put him to death. They want to stone him, right? This is what they want to do. And so they couldn't find any because there was none, right? There was none other than liars. Look at verse uh, 56. And, and many bear false witness. In other words, there was a lot of people that were telling lies on Jesus, right? But their witness, they could not get two people to agree. <laughs> Isn't that something? I got all these liars there, and not two people, not two of them could even agree together. Look at verse number 57. And so there arose certain and bear witness fault against him, saying, verse 58, and he said, we heard him say, I will destroy the temple, that he, that he made it with his hands, and within three days I will build an, another made without hands. 
in verse 59. But neither so did their witnesses agree. <laughs> How many know this is the chaotic confusion of the sinners? <laughs> they can't even agree with each other, you know? They're like, hey, you know? And, and, and so they couldn't find anybody that would agree together. So look at verse number 60. And the high priest, now he's getting involved. He, he, in the midst, and he asked Jesus saying, answer thou nothing. Don't you give any, you're, here, get this now. Here's Jesus. He never did anything wrong. He is perfect. Yes. The epitome, right, of perfect. Never did anything wrong, never said anything wrong. And he's there, and he's in the midst of all this commotion, all these people, all this yap, yap, all this talk, accusing him. Have you ever been there before? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. All, this, all this yapping going on. Yes. And, the, you know, you would think that Jesus, because, of course, he knows everything, right? And, he, and he, he's in, we got peace. And the, the father, gifts would start operating. He'd start saying, you, 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 you. He could have defended himself perfectly, clearly. Yeah. Right? But the word says Jesus was in the midst of all this chaos, all this commotion, all this ugliness. All this lies, all this darkness. And Jesus did not defend himself. He answered nothing. And so the high priest said, don't you answer anything? What is it that these witness, witness against thee? Look at verse number 61. But Jesus, what did he do? What did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? How many know sometimes you and I, if we don't want that peace to go, you need to hold yes. your peace. Yes. 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 Notice the word. He says he held his priest and the high priest. You know, so then the high priest said unto him, you know, da, 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 you're the son of God. But notice this, held his peace. Notice the word held his peace. Slide number seven. There's a great, it means to be quiet. It means to remain silent. silent. It means to remain calm. calm. Yes. It means not, it means to be still. It means to not be agitated. It's of a calm, quiet sea. Yes. Now, now, mind you, the thing that you, your flesh is going to want to do is not this. Right. Now, there is a time to speak, and then there is a time you don't say nothing. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. And what did Jesus do? He held, everybody say, he held, he held. his what? His is there a connection yes. with holding your peace, yes. with holding your tongue? Yes. Absolutely. Because your first response is, listen, I know this. You want to argue, want to debate, I got you. Da, 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 da. And that doesn't produce peace. That's right. We need to learn from the master. When he was going through all the, this was the highest level of demonic attack that any individual could ever experience is what he was experiencing there. You say, what, what, what about the cross? It started in the garden and it didn't stop. And he had this whole oppressive, demonic attack that was attacking him. And guess what? He held his peace. Yes. And if you go through Jesus after he got caught, and you go through uh, the words that he said, I think it's like seven or eight times he only spoke. He did not speak much when the pressure was on. When the pressure is on and you're tempted to speak the most, you should speak <laughs> Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. Look at James, the first chapter, verse 19. And this is a principle. I mean, I had to learn this. I had to learn it. There was one time I was getting brutally attacked. Brutally, brutally. And I, we, were, we were not wrong. Brutally, brutally attacked. Brutally. And it just comes with the territory. They're not attacking me. They're attacking, the, you know, it's the Lord. Jesus said, you do it unto me, you're doing it unto them. And I mean, I, I had scriptures. I had scriptures <laughs> of why they were wrong, or the, the, you know, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had word to back me. Amen, amen. And the Lord, I'm ready to rip, and He goes, nope. "Say nothing." Yes. 
Do not defend yourself. No, because I want to. <laughs> with my mouth and with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> you say, well, Pastor Michael, you should never feel that way. I have felt that way plenty of times. Yeah. One body slam, one little cruddy chop. Like Nacho said, the little, little something here and there. And I know 1 John 1, 9, thank you, Lord. I, oh, thank you, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. We'll move on. But I know that's not God's way. That's right. And the Lord said, shut your mouth. Yeah. And it's hard because I come from a family from a culture that our mouth Amen. knows how to move. <laughs> the first time my dear wife came to the house, uh, it was a wedding. So we had all family at the house. And here comes my pretty uh, girl that I'm just starting to get to know. And she comes in the house. And there was like 25 people in the house. And, and this is how we talked. We yelled at each other. You know, we're Italians, and so we, we lost the room. So I'm, I'm yelling at her, and then if I don't like the conversation, we just start yelling at somebody over there. We were just like yelling, yelling, yelling. And my wife was like totally oblivious because she lives in a family there. They don't yell like that. <laughs> You've met Gail, and Rick was the same way. They were just quiet. Rick barely got a word out of his mouth. And, uh, and so Jordana sit there, and she looked at the, and this is how she endeared herself to my family. She, she, everybody's yelling, going like this. She, she saw my father at the head of the table, and so she sat next to my dad and, and started to talk to him in the midst of this storm. And she endeared herself to my dad. From that day on, I think he loved her more than he loved me. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm totally serious. On his deathbed, he was telling her, I want to take you to Italy, and we're going to go there. I'm going to get you a convertible. And I, I'd go there, and it's like, hey, nothing, zero, nada, nothing. She goes, yeah, your dad wants to buy me a convertible. <laughs> too bad he died too soon. It would have been nice. Right? <laughs> but this is the story. But, this, but see, the thought I'm saying is, our home was blah, 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 blah. And I'll tell you, I had to, and I'm still learning. I'm not there. I'm still learning how to apply this to my life. Amen. Not just in public, but in private. Because yes. private will get you just as bad. Oh, yes. You might be saying, well, I'm not saying that something out there to them. But if you're saying it in home and these words are flying around, these words are ugly. That's right. Notice what the Lord said. Wherefore, my beloved brethren and sister. Yeah. How many yeah. sisters in the house? Yeah. Do you think that this applies to the ladies as well? Yes. <laughs> he says, my beloved brethren, let every man and woman be what? Slow. How should we be? Is this the opposite? Because most of the time we're, blah, 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 blah. we're not listening. We're not hearing each other. We've got to hear. The Bible says be swift to hear. I had to learn that with just my relationship with Jordana. It's like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm three steps ahead and she's over here and, and she's still thinking about the third thing, the thing I said back here and I'm already on uh, paragraph seven, you know, and she's, she's still chewing over here. Like, what did you say over there? <laughs> You're moving a little fast here, boy. Get back over here. We need to talk about here. <laughs> right? Swift to hear. And it's, 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 it's an art. Hearing is an art. Yes. Listening is an art. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what we'll do is with each other is we'll actually, you know, repeat back what we said. She'll go, honey, I just, she'll say, honey, am I, am I hearing you right? Or I'll say, am I hearing you right? Because we just assume they got it. Right? right. right? Has anybody been that way before? Because oh, yeah. you, 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 we're such good communicators. <laughs> and, and you can see I'm not really that good a communicator, right? But, but we're such good communicators that we just assume that we can just telepathically and that you're going to understand how I'm saying this. Well, you understand. You know me. They, some, my wife's like, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Right. So the word says, be swift to hear. Everybody say swift to hear. Swift to hear. Well, what's the next one? Slow. Everybody say slow. I want to say slow. slow. Notice the word for slow, slide number eight. How many love the word? He said, be slow to speak. That means you're dull. You're not sharp. You're not going at it strong. Look at the next word, inactive in mind. Stupid. <laughs> to, to, to slow to apprehend or believe. You're slow, slow, slow. Slow. Everybody say slow. slow. How many think this is a good thing? Yes. Was Jesus slow to speak? Yes. Remember that? Hey, this woman, we caught her in the act of adultery. Moses said, stone her. 
What are you saying? And they didn't just ask once. They were asking him, asking him, come on, Jesus, what do you, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? How do you know just because people are asking you a question, you do not have to answer it? Amen. Jesus was good on redirecting and not answering. Yes. Yep. Answer my question. Answer my question. Who says I got to answer your question? <laughs> are you guys hearing me? And they're pounding on Jesus. Did she, what do you say? She, she, she's, she's, she's guilty. Moses says we should stone her. What did Jesus do? He was teaching, and then the Bible says he stooped down. How many know that's what we got to do? We got to, instead of elevating and letting that blood pressure in our ears, in our eyes bulge out, and our face, ah, 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 what should we do? We should kind of, we should work on slowing it down. Yeah. 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 Amen. That's right. Why? Because, listen now, listen. How many have ever been in a situation where, where you know, somebody's coming at you and you feel like, oh, I, I, if I just say this one little thing, it's, and, and, you, and you think that it's not going to hurt. Have you ever been there and you just say that one little thing and you think you're trying to de-escalate it? Uh -oh. Has anybody been there besides myself? Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, it's, holy moly, this is, it's like you threw gas on the fire. Whoa, all I said is, uh, do you want butter on your French toast? I mean, uh, I'm just asking. <laughs> Right? Yeah. See, we have to be careful. When the pressure's on, when they're badgering Jesus, you got to, well, Pastor Mike, I know what to say. Do you? And he scooped down, remember? And he wrote in the sand. And finally stood up and goes, he answered their question. No. He said, he that's without sin, cast the first stone. Amen. I'm believe if we can get to a place, instead of just letting all the blood go, right? We're not holding our peace. If we can just pull it in. Yes. Yep. Almost act stupid. Don't even understand what you're saying. <laughs> I'm going to ponder this for a little bit. Are you guys hearing this? Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. Are you guys hearing this? We're getting it. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow. The first, again, I got, I got to emphasize, first, when it comes, your first response is going to, and it's usually the wrong response. Just pull it in, pull it in, pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. And what else you're supposed to be? Slow to what? Yeah. You guys want to look at this word? You guys had enough. <laughs> you guys want to hear this word? Anybody yeah. else? Jordana yeah. does. <laughs> look at slide nine. Oh, Jeremy's already there. He wants to see it. <laughs> it said, be slow to get angry. Slow for your temper to go. It's, wait a minute, this is all the opposite of what we read there. Don't let your heart be troubled. Slow of movement or agitation. Of the soul, impulsive, desire, violent emotion. You've been there. <laughs> we have an honest man in the house. <laughs> is it possible if you and I can, when the pressure's on and the storm's blowing, that you and I could just hold our peace? By holding our tongue. Yes. Yes. Look at it says in James, the first cha uh, third chapter, verse number one. How many love the word? Amen. I hope it's helping you. This this will help you. Yes. Some of you are going to have to just speak differently to your wife or your husband now. You know, because like sometimes we're in church, we go, oh, yeah, I got a good sermon. She, this is this is for her. <laughs> how many know? How many know the sermon's not for her? It's for you. Yes. Yeah, he really needs to get a hold of this. My brother. Be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Verse number two. For if any, for in many things we offend all, excuse me, in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a what? Perfect. Perfect man. And what, what is he able to do? He's able to bridle his whole body. Amen. So he's saying that we can literally control our body, our whole body, with our words. Yep. Notice the word for bridle. I want you to see it there, guys. How many love the word? Our, our words. Our words are so powerful. The word bridle is, means to lead by a bridle. That means you got something in an animal's mouth. Some of you are more familiar with that, right? And you can control that animal. It means to guide, hold, look at it, in check, restrain, to curb. So your words and my words, right, is saying here, can bridle or control us restrain us 
The first thing that goes, your first line of defense, when you start going like this, everything else is going to follow that. If you start speaking and saying the wrong thing, you're going in the wrong direction. Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. How many love the word? Because for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, able to bridle his whole, whole body. Look at that in the uh, Amplified, dear friend. For we, we all often stumble and fall and offend in many things. And if any man does not offend in speech, never says the wrong thing, he's fully developed character and a perfect man, able to control his whole body and to curb his entire nature. Look at that in the New Living Translation, guys. <laughs> we all make many mistakes, but those who control their tongues can also control themselves in other ways. Look at the Message Bible. But Pastor Michael, I'm right. <laughs> Gotta say it. <laughs> Gotta turn it loose. Let it go. And none of us is perfectly qualified. We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. <laughs> if you could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control Amen. of life. Now look at verse number three, guys. Now we're getting through quite a bit here. Amen. Behold, notice what he says. We put bits in horses' mouths. Why do we put bits in horses' mouths? That they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. So again, he's talking about your words, right? Your words, the direction that you're speaking is able to direct us, able to control us. Notice these words. He says, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. Look at the word for obey, slide number 11. Persuade, move, induce, right? One to persuasion. So that's what the bit does. That's what your tongue does, right? It means to um, persuasion, to do something to listen, to yield to comply with in accordance with the wish. So that's what the bit does and the Bible's comparing the bit with our tongue. Yes. Can you and I, can our words have power? Yes. Communicating, speaking. What are you saying? Your words will direct you. Go back to that scripture. He says that we get them so they obey us and by that bit we can turn their whole body. Notice the word for turn. It means to steer, to direct, to move, to transfer from one place to another. Your words, my words, what you say, what you don't say, directs us. Are you guys hearing this? Amen. Speaking, what are you saying? What are you communicating? What are you saying? What are you speaking? And if you don't know what to say, don't say the wrong thing. Just keep it quiet. Look at this. I just, in closing, guys, just one more story, guys. Look at the uh, numbers. The... Uh, 21st chapter. I'm going to start reading with verse number four. Your words, my words, they, they direct us, they lead us. So what should you be speaking? Peace. Amen. What did Jesus speak when the storm was there? Oh man, guys, I'm glad you woke me up. This is a real bad storm. My goodness, this is hurricane proportion winds. My goodness, what are you going to do? I'm soaking wet. I'm tired. No, what did Jesus do? He didn't speak the storm and say how bad the storm was. He spoke, peace, be still. Yes. Speak the opposite. Speak yes. the word. Yes. That's good. So, and so notice this. He goes, and, and speaking to the children of Israel, they're, they got out of Egypt. Now they're going through the uh, wilderness. They're go, en route to the promised land. And he goes, and they journeyed from Mount Hur by the way of the Red Sea to come past the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of what? So I want you to see this. Here. I got a map here. Jim, if you could put it up. I think it's uh, slide 13. Okay. <laughs> so they couldn't go through Edom. They wouldn't let them go through here. This would have been the direct route here. <laughs> How many like direct routes? Yes. <laughs> and so God, in his wisdom, right, he led them all the way around here. How many have ever felt they've been in a roundabout way? Yes. <laughs> and you actually, and I actually think we're smarter than God. God, why don't we just go right from here to here? Yes. Right? 
But so it says the people grew impatient because of the way. They, they, they become much discouraged because in their mind, they're like, we don't understand this. Right. Have you ever been in a situation where you're like, I don't understand this. Why? Why? I don't understand. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But how many know God is still God when you don't understand? Yeah. Right? When it doesn't make any sense to you, how many know God sees the big picture? Yes. God has a plan. Yes. But notice that. Go back to the scripture, Jeremy, and I want them to see it. And so they journeyed from Mount or the way of the Red Sea. To, they had to compass the way of Eden, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Now, Jimmy, put the word for much discouraged up. I want them to see it. So this is what that word was. Now, it didn't say that all of a sudden they lost height. It means they were short. That means impatient. Have you ever been, you ever said that? Don't say that to anybody. But have you ever, like, be careful around the boss today. He seems a little short. <laughs> He's impatient today, right? That means he's got no patience at all. Distressed, suffering from anxiety, sorrow, or pain, lost confidence. Look at the next one. I like this. They had no more enthusiasm. They lost heart. So not only were they short and impatient, suffering, and all these thoughts are coming through their mind, all this pain, they lost their confidence. They lost their enthusiasm. They had no more zest to live. They're kind of just drudging it. They're just, don't understand this one here. <laughs> and so notice what it goes on to say. I want you to see it. It says, in the journey, again, I'm, I know I'm reading it again, but how many know faith comes by hearing, yeah, right? Yeah. We're just seeing it again. And they can pass it. And so the people were much discouraged because of the way. They're, they're much discouraged. And uh, look at that in the uh, Amplified. Let's look at that in the Amplified verse. And then, we'll, then we're going to go to slide number uh, 15, Jeremy. And, and they journeyed from Mount Or, right? Go around. And the people became impatient, de depressed, much discouraged because of the trials of the way. Now look at slide number 15. Hallelujah. Then they traveled, right? We know where they traveled. But the people's tempers grew short because of the detour. <laughs> look, at, look at the Message Bible. The people became irritable and cross. How many know that's not a good sign? No. <laughs> How many know that's not a good thing, right? I got holy anger. Well, no, no. You just, you know, how, how many, can you see this here? So look at the next verse. So what did they do? And so the people, instead of getting in faith, they, they spake against Moses, a God, right? Why have you brought us out into Egypt to die in the wilderness for there's no bread, neither is there any water? And, our, and, our, and, and, and what are they doing? They're complaining. Yeah. I mean, they were getting supernatural bread, right? God was taking care of them supernaturally, and, and they're complaining. How many know complaining never is a good thing? Right. Even though you might be in the midst of your struggle or storm, how many know you got a lot, and I got a lot to be grateful for? Yeah. Yeah. Thankful for. Yeah. Grumbling and complaining, it's not a good thing. Right? And so they're, 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 they're you know, they reload this bread. Ugh, it's, they're, they're, oh, it's terrible here. Ugh. And look at verse number six. And so what happened? The Lord sent. Really, in the Hebrew, the Lord allowed it. Yeah, Those yeah. snakes were there yeah. all along. They were in the wilderness. Those snakes, God didn't create the snakes. All, they, what happened was they were supernaturally, wonderfully blessed. Yeah. <laughs> right? But, but, but because now all of a sudden they're grumbling and they're complaining, it's opening up a negative door. Yeah. Yeah. And look at this. In closing, guys, 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse number 10. And so God tells us here, if you read the whole chapter verse, of chapter 10, it talks about how that what happened to them in the wilderness, what happened to the children of Israel, was written for our learning, yeah. Yeah. for our instruction, for our admonition. Some people say, I don't believe in that Old Testament. Well, yeah, well, God's pointing to it. That's right, right. And there's things you can learn, right, yeah. from what they did. Mm -hmm. And so he tells us right here, and this is, the, this is the incident that he's talking about. He said, neither murmur ye, neither murmur, neither grumble, neither complain, as also they murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. 
What should they have done to hold their peace? Wouldn't it have been a good, just, just kind of pull it in, hold it in check? Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. I know I, I apologize. I gave you, I said, what, I got you, because I just want you to end with this, because well, how many need help in this area? We, we all do. Look at Psalms 141.3. How many are going to be slow to speak now? Just yes. slow to wrath. All right. I just want to end you, something that you can just pull in your heart. Look at the psalmist, what he prays. He said, set a watch. Set a watch. O oh Lord, before my mouth, keep the doors of my lips. Look at the word for keep. I want you to see it, slide number 20. He says, he's asking the Lord to do this. The word keep means, Lord, set a blockade. <laughs> can, can we ask God today, Lord? Lord, set a blockade over my mouth. <laughs> Are you guys hearing me? He says, set a block. Set a block. Look at that in the New Living Translation, guys. New Living says it like this. Take control of what I say, O Lord, and keep my lips sealed. Hallelujah. Slide 21, guys, in closing. This is it. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Lord, I'm sorry, Jeremy. What's that verse? There was a verse there. Uh, the next one, the next, the next one, buddy. I think it's slide, um, slide, slide 21, is it? It should be a slam, say Psalms 141. Three? Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, Jeremy, just, just do the slide 21, I guess. There? It's not there? Didn't do it? I didn't put it on there? No, of course not. <laughs> it's, it's my fault, obviously. Help me. Anyways, uh, not, if you went to verse number three, it says this, Lord, help me control my tongue. Help me to be careful what I say. That's the 20th century version. How many would be open for God to help you today? How many believe that God wants us to hold our peace? Now, if, this, if you're here today and you're sitting there going, well, Pastor Michael, I'm just full of, uh, there's, a, just, there's no, that peace is still inside you right now. And what you can do, what I can do, is I love the scripture, say, cast your care to the Lord. As you can just give it to God. You know, say, Lord, or if you made a goofy mistake, you could just say, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up. You know, I've been, I've been saying goofy things. I opened some negative doors. I've, crea I've created my own chaos. So, Lord, right now, right now, Lord, I'm asking you, just forgive me and just let's move on, right? And help me to keep my mouth closed. And, I, I, you know, the word says that if you'll do that, you cast your care to God. His peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and guard your mind. Today can be your day of freedom. Just bow your heads. Just get quiet with the Lord. And if, that's, if this message in any way spoke to you, this is the best time to apply the message right now. If God spoke to you, not Pastor Michael, anything I said that is, is, that is irrelevant. But if God, the Holy Spirit spoke to you, you know, like, hey, I got spoken to today in a good way, it's time to activate it right now. And just right now, just give those cares to the Lord. Give all the concerns to God. Just give it all to the Lord. Lord, we give it all to you. We give it all to you. Every care, every worry. Lord, we give it to you. I give it all to you. Give it all to you. Just give it to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I give you the cares. I give you the cares of life. Lord, forgive me for the times I spoke and became a part of the problem, Lord God, and not holding my peace. Lord, as the psalmist said, as the psalmist said, Lord,